Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, I think it's start now with 36 uh, devices are uh, logged in at the moment, so we, we can give it a start. Uh, others will join us shortly, hopefully. There were some issues technically, which we hopefully have resolved. Um, so without further ado, um, I would uh, introduce today's uh, general meeting. It's uh, to uh, commemorate a, a diamond of the Jamaat that Hazur referred to as a diamond. So um, I would request all of you to keep your uh, microphones. Uh, sorry, can you all switch off the microphones, please? Please get yourselves muted. Can you mute yourselves? Jazakallah. Um, and only the one, only the speaker should keep the microphone turned on. And the rest. Uh, can everyone please turn off their microphones? Okay, um, Jazakallah. So now we'll start with Tilawat the Quran Kareem, and only the speaker would be uh, allowed to unmute themselves. And if they desire so, they can also turn on the video, which we would prefer to see you as well while she's presenting. So uh, today's plan is that we'll start with Tilawat uh, and then Hadith, and then a short excerpt from the uh, writings of the Prophet and then we'll have three guest speakers to talk about uh, our great martyr, Sayyid Ali Ahmed Shaheed. So if I could request Amir Mahmood Sahib, who's son of Tahir Mahmood Sahib, to uh, present Tilawat the Quran Kareem. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu halladullukum ala tijarah. Ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. Tu'minuna billahi wa rasulihi wa tujahiduna fi sabilillah. translation of verses 11 to 13 of Surah As-Saf is as follows. O ye who believe, shall I point out to you a bargain that will save you from a painful punishment, that you believe in Allah and his messenger and strive in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your persons. That is better for you if you did but now. He will forgive you your sins and make you enter the gardens through which streams flow and pure and pleasant dwellings in gardens of eternity. That is the supreme triumph. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Thank you very much, Amir. Uh, now I request Ezaz Mahmoud Sahib to present a hadith for us. Assalamualaikum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid 
Abu Umama Bihili radiyatala anhu relates that he heard the address of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the occasion of the farewell pilgrimage in the course of which he said, Be mindful of your duty to Allah, observe the five prayers and the fast of Ramadan, pay the zakat duly, and obey those in authority among you. You will enter the garden of your Lord. Jeremy. Zakal Aizaj, now I'd request uh, Nuruddin to please present an excerpt from the writings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, something which relates to today's topic, and I would uh, request Nuruddin, who is son of Balayid Abdul Salam Sahib. Nur. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. A'uzu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Righteousness and purity. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, said in a heartfelt manner, Yesterday, i.e. on 22nd June 19, 8, 1899, I received the revelation many times that your community should become righteous, and if you tread the subtle ways of righteousness, then God will be with you. The promised Messiah alayhi salam, said, It grieves my heart immensely when I ask myself what I am to do so my community may adopt true righteousness and purity. Then, the promised Messiah alayhi salam, said, I pray so profusely that sometimes, whilst engaged in prayer, I am overcome by weakness, and on certain occasions, I begin to feel a loss of consciousness and feel like I may even die. The promised Messiah also said, until a community becomes righteous in the sight of God, it can never receive the divine succor. The promised Messiah said, righteousness is the essence of the teachings found in all divine scriptures, the Torah, the gospel, etc. The Holy Quran has expressed in a single word the greatest means by which one can act according to the will of God Almighty and attain his ultimate pleasure. The Promised Messiah said, I also think about selecting certain people from my community who are truly righteous, who give precedence to religion over worldly affairs, and who are devoted to Allah, so that I may assign them certain religious duties. Then I will not care about those who remain absorbed in grief and pain for this world, and who waste away their lives seeking worldly carrion, day and night. At night, the promised Messiah said with a sense of extreme pain, Alas, at this time I have no one but God. Strangers, and even my own, are bent on disgracing me. They lie in wait to see me afflicted by misfortunes and vicissitudes. Now, if God Almighty does not help me, then I have nowhere to go. Malfuzad, Volume 2, page 23 to 24. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Aslan Jazakallah. Thank you very much, uh, Nuruddin Sahib. Um, certainly very pertinent uh, excerpt because we are going to discuss about a brother of ours, brother, friend, uh, a son, uh, and who has been one of the best servants of Khilafat one can ever imagine or dream to be. Um, today, as you would all have uh, already figured out, um, and also the excerpt that was just recited from the writings of Prophet ﷺ, that we have to aim to be righteous people. And here is a brother who was extremely righteous, and his righteousness has been um, shown to us, us through so many anecdotes that have been uh, that have reached us through Hazul's Friday sermon, and we have been talking about him by. I'm just mentioning Sayyid Talih Ahmed Sahib Shaheed. The reason for this general meeting to be organized on this topic is because when has been Can I please ask you to meet yourselves? Because I can't do essentially. So you have to mute everyone has to meet themselves. Okay. So um, when Hazul gave in this Friday sermon said that the passing of, of, of Sayyid Talih Ahmed Sahib, that has shaken him. And that was one sentence which was more than enough a reason for us to, to gather here and discuss how could we now aim to help Khilafat and in the sense the void that's been created by the passing of a beautiful soul uh, in our brother Sayyid Talih Ahmed. How could we then have so many more Talis produced in the Jamaat? And at the local level, this is where the, the real Jamaat is, at the very local level that we are able to produce and see amongst you, the young people, the future of Tale, uh, like Tale, and many more like him. 
So you must all write to Huzur, inshallah. You'll all try to, and we should all write. They will try to become like Dale, inshallah. Because, but, but without further ado, um, I would like to then introduce uh, as to who is going to be presenting uh, in this session. Uh, we have uh, Amir Safir Sahib, who's uh, uh, chief editor of Review Religions. Then we have two very, very good brothers, friends and colleagues at MTA, uh, Mubahil Shakir Sahib uh, and Noshirwan Rashid Sahib. These two brothers have been part of this week with the Zoo team. So in other words, they are working uh, uh, under uh, um, uh, um, Abid Khan Sahib. And most importantly, was, they're working in the team with our late brother, Sayyid Ali Ahmed Shaheed. Um, and I would request all three brothers, one after the other, to say a few things for anyone to ask questions about how can we now be able to serve in the best possible manner so that the void Hazur has felt. And if Hazur says that the news of his demise has shaken us, it clearly is, is a huge, huge uh, uh, um, tremor for us to, to, to take seriously. Uh, and clearly, inshallah, we'll work together to, to fill that void and produce many more talis. Uh, even if you're able to get one tale from amongst you, the young people, then I think uh, it's, it's a job well, well done. Uh, may I first request Mubail Shakir Sahib, who was also in the documentary, uh, A Diamond of Khilafat, uh, about uh, Shaheed Tale Ahmed. Uh, and Mubail Shakir Sahib has been working in MTA News for a number of years. So if I may request Mubail Shakir Sahib to say something about uh, the deceased soul, and then at the end, we'll have some questions and contributions from younger people as well. Mubail Sahib, over to you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So by way of introduction, um, I worked with Taleh for around seven years in the MTA News Department. Uh, but prior to that, I also worked with him in the Review of Religions. He was head of the index and, in, and tagging team. And I worked under him in that team. And um, I think even before that, I worked with him uh, on, the, on MTA's Real Talk program, where he used to help us with script writing on a voluntary basis. So that's just a bit of background. Um, first and foremost, if you want to learn about Taleb, his life and his many beautiful qualities, then the most perfect way, in my opinion, to do that is to listen to Hazul's uh, previous Friday sermon. I have never seen Hazul speak so beautifully, uh, Hazul speak so beautifully and emotionally about any individual before. So even if you have listened to it, I would urge you all to listen to it again. One thing to note is that I worked with Dale for many years but I feel that only in the last two weeks since his demise, I really got to know him. He had so many qualities and so many good deeds, which he carried out discreetly, which only became apparent after his passing. Bale was a very simple person and he had no interest or desire in worldly pursuits. He used to dress very simply and speak very plainly and honestly. He was kind and very jolly. One thing I, and I'm sure many who knew him, remember about him, is his smile and his laugh. But he used to laugh and joke a lot, and he was very enthusiastic about life. He loved and obeyed the Khalifa of the time to the letter. As I mentioned, he was a happy and enthusiastic individual, but if in his presence someone questioned or was negative about the Jamaat or the Khalifa of the time, he would be suddenly become very serious and vigorously rebut any such talk. Dali had a very strong work ethic, and I would describe him as if uh, you know he worked like a man on a mission. When he was working on a project, he did so relentlessly without any, any care for himself. He would be sat as, uh, at his chair working for a long period of time and wouldn't have anything to eat, 
If he did eat, it would just be snacks from the vending machine so he could keep working while he was eating. He didn't let anything distract him. He also did not waste any time. So often when we are waiting for something, we would go on our phones or do some other worldly activity while we are waiting just to pass the time. But Bale did not do this and he used, he used every second of his time productively. And this is how he achieves so much in such a short space of time. Uh, when he was working, he used to do so discreetly and would tell very few people what he was working on. Uh, and then once uh, he was completed, he completed whatever he was working on. Uh, we would all be amazed about what he has produced, whether that be a documentary or a news report or whatever he was working on. Uh, I remember one time he mentioned to me and one of my colleagues, uh, he used to have this hard drive, which he bought with his own money. And he said that I had this hard drive and all my work is on this hard drive. All the documentaries and he was working on multiple, multiple documentaries, three, four documentaries, maybe even more than that at the same time. So he said, if anything were to happen to me, you both know where my work is. Now, at the time, he said this in a kind of joking way, in a humorous manner. But I remember thinking at the time that it was a strange thing to say. But in, in hindsight, the statement uh, makes more sense. He made many excellent documentaries, which touched the hearts of millions of Ahmadis. But in my opinion, his biggest legacy is this week with us all, which was his idea and which brought millions of Amdis closer to their Khalifa. May Allah bless him and grant him a lofty place in heaven. May Allah grant all his friends and family patience. May he continue to reap the rewards for all of the good he has left behind in this world. Amen. And finally, I would kindly request you all to remember the MTA News team in your prayers that we are able to continue and build upon all of Dali's good works. Jazakallah. Thank you very much for a very short and comprehensive uh, memory of, of our brother, uh, late Shaheed Tale, uh, Sayyid Tale Ahmed Sahib. Um, I think what you mentioned about Hazur being uh, seemingly uh, very emotional about this particular passing, it, we all witnesses. And that reminds us that every death of this kind needs to wake us all up and Dale's blood should not go in vain we should all aim to pick those attributes that has always mentioned as many as we can and there are plenty in that Friday sermon as you mentioned so I'd request all my brothers and sisters young and old alike to watch the Friday sermon again and perhaps make note of those attributes Hazur remembered of this great brother Jazakallah again, Mubahal Sahib. So I may request, may I request uh, Amir Safi Sahib, who has slightly different angle to today's discussion. Amir Sahib is also a resident of Serbian Jamaat, so that really uh, uh, is, is a very useful uh, um, thing for us, that our brother who resides here can also give us some insight. He also serves at Rio for Religion as his chief editor. Amir Sahib is also involved in translation at MTA. You must have heard his voice numerous times. Um, and I'm a Sahib, and I've known him for, for some years uh, as a brother, as a friend. And I'm very pleased that I'm a Sahib <coughs> is serving uh, Allah's cause to the best of his abilities as well, as we know other brothers are. So may I request now I'm a Sahib to please give us some uh, background to how he knew uh, Dali Sahib. And also uh, I'm a Sahib's uh, statement was uh, quoted by Hazur in his Friday sermon. Therefore, I thought it was incumbent upon us to invite Amir Sahib over as well, because if anything Azur's given this Friday sermon becomes part of the history. So may I please request Amir Sahib to give us some background to how you knew Dali Sahib and what have you gathered from what you learned from him. Amir Sahib. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, so as has been mentioned, um, initially I knew Dali from when he was at the time studying biomedical science. His, his field was something completely different. 
it was nothing to do with journalism and he wasn't going in that direction. I can't remember how exactly we met. It may have been through his uncle Abid Khan, who you know is a press secretary and is a very close friend of mine. That's perhaps the way we got introduced and Dale came in and some of you may have already heard that he was ahead of our indexing and tagging team. But I'm not just going to speak to you about from a work point of view. I think over the years, what's been unique is that I've developed, I developed a very personal relationship with Dale beyond work. In the, in the four years he worked with me, we would play football together. We would eat together. I got to know his family very well. In fact, Dale, by the time of his passing, and this is the last thing Dale came to speak to me about, I, I feel very honored that before he left for Africa, he came, to, he came to meet me and we sat for about an hour, hour and a half. And I should mention something by way of that, that when he came to see me, he came to, he was said he was recording a documentary on persecution. And he, he recorded me, uh, he, he said he wanted to speak to me about that because the Review of Religions had covered Saib Zada Abdul Latif Shaheed. And he wanted to, me to speak about what the Review had said. And little did I know that I was speaking about one Shaheed from history and there was another future Shaheed right in front of me. He then went through, I saw his research ability again, he wanted to take out the old reviews. But anyhow, what I want to mention here is that when I mentioned this to Abid Khan Saab after his passing, Abid Khan Saab said he was not even aware that he was working on this documentary. He, this is the way he used to sometimes surprise people and work on several documentaries at once. I'm not sure if Mabahil Saab and Noshirvan Saab knew this as well, but perhaps he mentioned this. But anyhow, what I mean to say is that by the time of his passing, one of the last things he said to me was he was speaking to me about one of his family members and ensuring that they are uh, working in the review. So many of Dali's very close family members, siblings, aunt, uncle, they have been working in the review over five, six, seven, eight years in important positions. And so in short, I've, I've had a very close personal relationship with Dali. Yeah. And uh, one thing I would like to say is what Mubahil Saab said, first of all, is absolutely Mubahil Saab hit the nail on the head. That the first thing is to watch the khutbah of beloved Hazur. And uh, everyone must have heard it. And if not, personally, I'm, I'm going back and listening it again. It's life changing. And um, to give you an example, uh, up with someone Sorry, may I please request everyone to mute themselves. I am not being able to mute some people. Most I can mute centrally. Otherwise, I have to mute everybody, and that includes myself then. Mm. So could I please request everyone, please everyone, mute yourselves. This is a very somber event, a somber discussion. So I think I request that we don't hear your conversations in the background. First, you must be talk not be talking anyway. It's, it's the general meeting we're holding. But if you really have to talk about something, then make sure you do it in a different room. Uh, let, let the other family members listen to it or at least mute yourselves. So we don't want to hear anybody else now interfering with this very important conversation. Uh, back to you, Amir Saab. So just two, three things I want to mention. As Mubayal Saab said, please listen to the Friday sermon. This is the most important thing in which Hazur outlined everything incredibly emotionally. And that's the first point of call. As I said, Mubayal Saab mentioned that very rightly. There's a few things I would like to say that I, uh, uh, you know, I noticed in Dale, which I can add. One is that Dale had this singular vision to always achieve the best. And he had such a huge drive to do that, which I've rarely seen in anyone. And this wasn't only in his work point of view, as we know, and Mubayal Saab mentioned this, I'm sure Noshirvan Saab will mention it, like this week with Hazur is a groundbreaking program. His documentaries on MTA News are groundbreaking. Even the work, many people weren't aware of the work he did in review. To go over a hundred you know, years worth of articles of review of religions, index them and manage a team, it's also groundbreaking, and this is Sadka Jariya, continuous blessing which people still benefit from. But I also noticed this in even small matters. I'll give you an example. Dale and I used to play football all the time together. We would go out and we used to sometimes call missionaries and different wakfin. And over four or five years, we used to go play in different centers and gyms and call people. And you can imagine how much time we spent together in this way. So as this, as more Vakfin and Murambiyan started coming, and Dale was an MTA at the time, and I was in review, I was actually looking back at the email. I was looking back at the emails yesterday. And even in the emails, Dale is like, are you playing football this week? I've got two people. And I'll be like, I've got three people. But the point I'm trying to make is that Dale and me, just out of a lot of people you might have heard, you've seen a documentary on MTA. If you haven't, please watch that. 
Dali had a very jovial personality. He loved the joke. He never made serious any a situation unnecessarily. He always took it lightly in a good way. So we, we organized out of kind of banter, a match between Review of Religions and MTA. It was all in good spirits. And I was, I think I, I was a captain of one team and Dale was, and he brought his MTA people and I brought Review. I'm also an MTA member. It was all in good spirits and banter and everything. So going back to the point about his ultimate drive, we beat uh, Dale's team 4-1. It just so happened the next day I was with the Review missionaries and boys outside of KFC and Morden. And we got out the car and Dale was on the other side of Morden, you know, near Morden station. And the boys started bantering Dale and saying, Dale, you lost, you know, we lost 4-1 and started making chants and finger indications like 4-1. And I still remember that time that Dale, he took it um, not to heart, but he took, he, he took it as a challenge. You know, as Hazul mentioned with MTA News that people initially wasn't that successful as it is now and people was talking about MTA News negatively and Dale took it as a challenge. So I'm just giving you an example that even in the smallest of things, his mindset was the same everywhere. It was like a, something instilled in him that no matter what in life, I have to be the best. So we beat them 4-1. The boys were bantering him across the road outside of KFC. And I still look back at that and Dale, I could see he was thinking something seriously in his mind. He wasn't going to take it. The next day, it might have been Mubahil Shakir Sahib who mentioned it to me or someone mentioned it to me. But even recently at the Ifsos, Amarabi uh, mentioned it to me that Dale goes back into MTA. He rounds up the troops, so to speak, the boys. And he discusses tactics for a few days and he goes and gives pep talks and rallying speeches that look, we can't settle for this. We have to come back and win. Dale never settled for second place. He never settled for mediocrity. He always and everything, even something as trivial as a football match, the rest of the people went back and went back to their work and were content. Okay, fine, we lost. Not Dale. No, I, I'm not going to accept losing without at least trying my best. And so the boys again told me just recently again, and I knew this, he rallied the troops, he put the strategy, he made the tactics, and he comes back in the next match and they completely destroy us. I think it was like 8-2 or something. And on the pitch, Dale was like a lion. He was like a brave heart going around, barking orders. And, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't live with it. We couldn't do with it. I, I'm, I know you've heard this, you know, we, we, we're going to hear this from Review of Religions, Indexing or MTA. But I'm just giving an insight that even something as ordinary as a football match, Dale, he had this thing ingrained in him that I have to achieve the best. And I actually mentioned this something which I'm about to mention to Hazur before the khutbah when I went to see Hazur and gave my condolence. It reminded me of something I read of Hadrat Muslim Allah Muslim once gave an address which we, um, I believe, published in review. And in the speech, and it reminded me of Dale, I said to Azur at the time, how the Muslim in this dress speaks about how, you, how to make impossible into possible. And how the Muslim says that some things in the world people consider impossible and they are. For example, you can't say a triangle you can make from three sides to four sides. A triangle is three sides. You can't change it. It'll change the definition. But there are other things how the Muslim says that people give up too easy. I'm paraphrasing. It's not the exact words. People give up too easy. And they consider it unsurmountable odds. They can't overcome it. And they can't change the impossible. And how the Muslim mode interestingly gives the example of Napoleon. And Hazur mentioned this example to me once a long time ago that Napoleon, for those of you who know the history, and excuse me if I've quoted it wrong, after he was emperor, it was one point when he got evicted and he was banished to an island completely on his own solitary confinement or whatever. There was no hope for him to come back and reclaim France. But Napoleon mustered up unbelievable determination. He said, on his own, with no power, no support, I'm going to go back to France. And when I go back to France, I'm going to reclaim, reclaim uh, France. So he comes back on a ship all by himself onto the land of France, onto the coast, how the Muslim art explains. And the army come and they say, we're going to kill you, leave from here. And Napoleon, in the face of impossible odds, certain death, says no. And he starts giving a rallying speech. And he starts saying that, you know, he starts saying that, no, I used to, you used to be under me. And he starts saying all convincing arguments. And in the end of that certain death situation, the army put down their guns. They run over to Napoleon and they say that, um, they say that, you know, oh, emperor, we are with you now. And they change their mind. So how the Muslim out said, we need this in Ahmadis, this spirit of not giving up, not thinking that things which are impossible, seemingly impossible, that you have to actually almost be ready to give up your life. And I, I saw this in Dali as well. 
this Napoleonic spirit, which other Muslims had wanted from every Ahmadi, not just from one Ahmadi, but I saw that spirit in Dale. And I gave you the example of the football match, just to show that, as I said, in the review of religions, he brought something from ground zero, a project of over hundred years and MTA news. He started groundbreaking things, which the other, my other brothers here will explain better than me. But what I'm trying to say, and especially for the young people here, what I've learned from Dale and inspired by Dale is that if you want that mindset, you can't just have it for one day or two days. You can't just have it for one project or two projects. You have to have it in every aspect of life. You have to have that huge drive that I'm going to achieve everything or at least try my level best. And even if I fail, if I have a setback, I'm going to try even harder. I'm going to change my tactics and do something else. So that's um, one quick thing. Uh, one, one more thing I will mention uh, is that, uh, as I mentioned, Tale, uh, uh, when he was working in uh, the Review of Religions as well, at that time, he was doing biomedical science. And this is also something interesting. It doesn't mean that everyone has to change their course, but it's quite interesting that if you keep your options open, what you can achieve in life. And of course, that was destiny for him. It was at that time that I remember he received guidance from Hazur to go into journalism. And this was something brand new. And he came to see me at the time. And even now, recently, he would phone me after documentaries and say that was one of my most life-changing moments when Hazur changed his course. He was meant to become a doctor. And his parents mentioned this in the documentary. And instead, Hazur is such a complete contrast, biomedical science and journalism. But again, it's just incredible that from doing, as I mentioned, to from doing something which he had no experience in, no knowledge in, he was doing something science-based to be changed to journalism. He took that challenge from, you know, he started off doing stuff before that in Review of Religions. So he got some experience there and then he went to press department and then he went to MTA. But again, as I mentioned for, for him, for, uh, and this has been mentioned in the khutbah, and this is the ultimate point I want to make, that all of this for him centered around his devotion to Jamaat and Khilafat. Everything that he did, he did because of that drive that he got from the Khalif to Masih, the guidance of Khalifa, and his wish to serve the Jamaat. Everything that he did to try and overcome those odds or uh, to, to attach his family or to, um, I'm amazed even this morning, there was a program on Voice of Islam and I forgot that he worked for Voice of Islam and he was such a, you know, I was thinking, how did he do so many tasks at once? And I'll be honest, when Farooq Saab asked me to come today, you know, he mentioned, I, I, I sometimes I have a very heavy schedule. I'm working with Azur and I have review of religions work and I have translation work. But I was inspired by Dale that he was doing voice of Islam work. He was doing MTA work. He was doing Qudam work. He was doing Atfal work. He was helping with his family. So that means if we do, you know, make time and the way he did, then it is possible. So ultimately, all the things that I, I just mentioned, just one or two quick things. I thought I'll mention that, that for him, his drive was the guidance of Khalif to Masih and his service to Jamaat. And in this, one, one, one more thing I would like to quickly add, if I can, is that one quality of Dale is that he never backbited. And I think it's been mentioned by Hazur, and I personally witnessed this, and I can expand on it, that he never kept anything in his heart. And that's an incredible quality. He never kept anything anyone said in his heart. And when he wanted to do any project, I saw that he didn't care for the world. If he knew that it's from Hazur and it's for the sake of Allah and spreading the message of the Holy Prophet, as Hazur said, he didn't care at all if there were a hundred people who spoke negatively about it. He didn't care if people thought negatively of it. He didn't care if people, um, you know, if it seemed like, as I mentioned, uh, people doubted it. That singular vision which he had for the sake of Khilafat, for the sake of Allah, is something truly inspiring and it's something which I've rarely seen in any people, in, in, in many people. There's many more things, but uh, I think Farooq Saab, we gave a chance to know Shirvan Saab as well. Um, but these are just a few things that I mentioned. And I think for the young people here as well, um, Farooq Saab, one thing, I, I won't mention the name, but after Hazul's khutbah, there were a few people who messaged me. And, uh, you know, for example, one young person mentioned, mentioned me, and I won't mention names, and he said, you know, after the khutbah and the documentary, I decided to get up for what my tahajjud the next day and start doing tahajjud. I'm not saying this to brag, but something truly profound happened to me. I can't explain it. 
I know, again, two other people, I won't mention names or even infer who they are. And they've been having a fight with each other, not fight, but, you know, there's been grudges for a long period of time. And it was, you know, and I know that straight after the khutbah, one of them started, you know, went to the other person and, you know, just embraced him and said, let's leave this now. So there's many such things which Dale is inspiring and will continue to inspire to reassess our life. And I was saying to Farooq Saab beforehand that the, the, the cliche that you can't judge a book by its cover, I feel applies so strongly in Dale's case. Of course, like myself and the brothers here, we knew his qualities, but Mubahil Saab mentioned something so important. Although I knew so much about Dale, his family sometimes even call me like, almost like a family member, although I'm not related by blood, I have this connection with them for a long time. But from Hazul Khutbah, I learned so much, which he had never told me. I'd never known these things. He never bragged about it. His doing tahajjits for an hour a day. His being right beside Hazul at the Khilafat election. I mean, I'm sure many of you will know people who would probably be bragging about this all day, that they were standing right next to the Khalifa. So why well, I say you can't judge a book by its cover, that we never know who is the person who we're meeting in the mosque or there. We judge people. But we don't know. And Hadam Muslim also once mentioned this that even if there's a thief, of course, what a thief or robber does is a thief does something wrong. If he steals something small, let's say someone steals something small. But he says, we don't know if that person went back and served their mother all night or prayed all night. So we never know. We can't make our ju judgment based on something on the surface because, like in case of Dale, he, he, he hid so much. It was Hazur who said he knew. But so many of us didn't know of these great qualities he had. We knew he was a great person, but not to this extent. And so this cliche of don't judge a book by its cover, I feel is really important that Allah knows. And maybe sometimes, some, only after sometimes a person's passing or martyrdom, we truly value their rank. Zakallah. Zakirullah, um, thank you very much, um, Amir Saab. A, a very inspirational um, uh, talk about um, our brother Dale, uh, Dale Shaheed, I must say. I mean, I, I also, you've also reminded me a lot of things that I, I'm also reminiscing at uh, the time with him. I was also one of the lucky ones to have known him uh, to an extent. And I think you, you are totally right. He was, a, he was a true perfectionist in everything he did. And I, I remember in MT as well, he would uh, do things and get things done. I mean, I remember a number of times it happened. I remember more than once that while sitting in the chair and some recording had to go on and some equipment was broken and he just would just get it fixed. Uh, he would go around and ask people and sometimes he might even th think perhaps he's annoying some people as well. But I think uh, now reflecting on this, he's not annoying. He, he knew the task at hand and he, he knew it must be done. So he got it done anyway. You mentioned about the Hajjit prayer. Yes, I can also, I know some people as well, at, at least a couple of them who have started the Hajjit uh, after Zuz's sermon. So clearly that's happening. Uh, and I'm sure uh, we have good attendance today from Serbian Jamaat, and I'm sure in your family, the same thing's happening as well. Um, I've also just uh, noticed that over the years that Dale Shaheed was maturing so quickly. The time he joined MTA, uh, I think must've been 2013, 12, around that time, I, I think so or maybe slightly earlier. But ever since then, how he developed is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you also mentioned about him interviewing about the persecution. I even remember that he even wrote a dissertation on 1974 proceedings. And, and when I spoke to his father about this, his dad wasn't even aware. He said, I didn't even know that he had anything of the sort. And I, and I know that he had something. He wrote something, a dissertation on 1974. Hazul was aware of that as well. So, so, and, and his father told me he normally used to keep things to himself. He would not even brag about things to even it to his father or his mother. So those things really have stuck with me. And 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 I think um, um, what I what I wrote just whilst he was saying, I just typed a couple of things. And I, I said one more thing was that uh, he was truly a diamond. But of course, uh, as his father also mentioned, that it in fact is down to Khilafat. Hazur has really made that diamond shine. It is one of Hazur's creations that Hazur has created out of somebody who's in oblivion and then made him as a shining star to, to, to remain in the skies of Ahmadiyyad forever. And I think we've seen that happen a number of times, not just in his case, in, in, in many cases in Jamaat's history, the Khilafat, Khalifatul Musih has that magic, magic touch, if you like, 
that it breeds that magic into people's spirit and that they become the shining stars. And that happens to, to so many young people, countless young people. So I request all the young people serving Jamaat also to please connect yourselves with Khilafat because Khilafat is that magic wand that can make everything that seems impossible, possible. So please do pay heed and make this a changing moment in your lives that we will become like Tale. We'll try to follow his footsteps, not just tell his stories or shed a couple of tears, just literally do something to fill that void that Hazur has felt and how much better opportunity there could be for every Ahmadi Muslim to then do exactly the same as Tale Shaheed did, so that his blood uh, brings more flowers in the garden of Ahmadi that flourish and flourish as evergreen. Okay, um, now um, I forgot at the start, but I think it's good that it's a good juncture to not invite over uh, of a, uh, one of the itafal we have in our Jamaat, Faran Nazir, is Arib Nazir Sahib's son. And he would recite the poem that Dali Sahib wrote. And that poem was a manifestation of his deep love for Khilafat. And has also mentioned that uh, poem in his Friday sermon. So I would request Faran to please recite that poem for us and if you can you can turn the camera on but at least i will show the poem on the screen as well when you go along faran over to you assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam poem composed by sayyid Dale Ahmed Sahib Shahid, which is mentioned by Hazume, Allah's peace be on him, in his Friday sermon of 3rd September 2021. I love my caliph more than the others. They only love, I'm only his lover. They crawl to his hand from far icy coasts, a wonderful host supported by hosts. As mountains migrate for prophet and king, when heaven comes near, they see him and sing. My silence might great, but I love him more. Whole with holiness, as, may, as my sued soul soars. When they see his face, they weep and they cry. My heart beats to tears, but my eyes are dry. But by God's promise, I'm able to boast. I swear I can prove I love him the most. They truthfully well tell, disclosing their love. Humble he blushes, embarrassed enough. For his weary ears, he surely preferred the rude and takbirs, Allahu Akbar. So their two of lovers ends at this line, I keep my secret for his sake, not mine. The lamp in my night forever aglow. I love my Caliph. I love my Caliph, but he'll never know. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Thank you very much, Farhan. Uh, he said, I love my Caliph, but he will never know. Now, we also have seen that exactly opposite happened. Hazur knew everything of that and so did the entire Jamaat. Isn't that amazing? When you love somebody that Allah Ta'ala has appointed with so much depth, then Allah Ta'ala in the end rewards you in such a way that you would have never would have imagined. He kept it himself, but it, it wasn't with him. It just was shared with the entire world as inspiration. Jazakallah, thank you very much, uh, Farhan. Well done. Now, um, I would request uh, Nosh, uh, Nosherwan Rashid Sahib, who was working, he, he is working, mashallah, in MT News. Uh, and that's uh, the team of MT News where They've all worked together as, as, as brothers and they all have memories and very fresh memories. Um, and they worked very importantly in this week with Azur. That's, that's the team. And, and I would request Nasheer Wan Saab to share with us some of the uh, anecdotes of how they made this program, if possible. And anything you remember in particular, uh, which has stuck with you. And, okay, so um, over to Nasheer Wan Rashid Sahib, if you could please enlighten us with some more memories of our dear brother, the diamond, Sayyid Dali Ahmed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to all. Well, I'll start off with um, how I first came across uh, Dali Sahib. So I remember just over three years ago 
um, perhaps just a month of uh, July, um, Hazrat Clifton Masi, may Allah be his helper, had graciously appointed me to the MTA News Department. And when I found out that I had been appointed here, um, I contacted Abid Khan Saib, who, who is the director of MTA News. So I told him, um, and he was aware that I had been appointed here. So he said, um, here's the, a number of uh, Dali Sahib. Uh, you can contact him and uh, you can see him in the office uh, tomorrow. So I contacted Dali Sahib and I messaged him and he said, um, come to the office tomorrow at 11. So I got ready the following day, um, prepared myself and um, and I walked into the Betakhtu complex where MTA studios are. And uh, I knocked on the office and Dali Sahib was sitting there. He graciously opened the door for me and um, he put it, I, did said, I said salam to him, he said salam to me. And then he saw that I was wearing a shirt like how I am now. And um, it, was, uh, it was Friday and um, on Friday, usually uh, they would record Jamaat News, the presenter's intro. So um, he saw me wearing a shirt and um, without saying anything else, he opened his drawer and um, he had a few ties in there. So he took out one of the ties and he's like, uh, Nosh, here's a tie, wear this, we're gonna, we're gonna go downstairs and uh, you're going to be presenting for Jamaat News. So when he said this, uh, first I hesitated and I was nervous because I had never presented for uh, Jam uh, MTA before. Uh, but Dallas, I said, it's okay, um, I'll go set up and you can come downstairs with me and you can see how I do it and um, I'm with you, you'll be fine, you'll be okay. So he set up the studio and he was recording now and um, I didn't have no script. So he was feeding me the lines. I have to say this, this is the intro, these are the headlines and I have to mention these. And a normal person or now or presenters, they would normally take five to 10 minutes to record um, their, their presenter's intro or an outro. Whereas because I was nervous um, and it was my first time, it had taken me perhaps about 30 to 40 minutes or even longer than that, perhaps maybe an hour. And throughout this entire period, Dalibai never uh, disencouraged me or said, um, why, why are you taking so long to say this word or why are you taking so long to uh, say this sentence? But after every take, he would be, it, it's a pre-recorded program. So after every take, he would be like, it's okay, um, try again. Um, it's okay, or if you can't say this, say it this way. And that was the first time I had come across the Dali Sahib. Um, I had seen his documentary before, but I had never met him in person. And from the first day, like I had so much respect and love for him that even though I'm being told these are the lines to say these, but I had to do it over and over again. But Dalis, I have showed so much encouragement and um, uh, love towards me that he never made me feel um, as if I am, I am making a mistake. And then of course, over the last three years, he was not only uh, my colleague, um, but as time grew and as time went on, he was also uh, my teacher. And more importantly, he became a friend and a close brother of mine because we were spending um, hours and hours in office every day. Um, we were sitting, literally, as I'm sitting here, he, he would sit about two meters away from me opposite. And I remember in initially in the beginning, um, I had no experience of editing or camera skills or lighting or script writing. And Dalibai, uh, with love and um, affection, he made, he combined, I was going through your messages and emails and stuff. He compiled a list of around 25, 27 uh, YouTube videos on various um, uh, topics, um, uh, camera skills or certain way you should film or lighting or script writing. So he compiled a list of 25 or so um, YouTube videos. And he said, um, Nosh, just go through these and you will learn a lot. Um, and um, so then I started going through those videos and I certainly did learn a lot from those videos. But then initially in the first few days, um, when I had started working with him, he would sit me down right next to him. And as he was editing uh, world news or he was working on any reports, he would say, just watch what I do and you'll pick up things. And whilst he was uh, doing those tasks, he would also explain, okay, this is how I'm doing this. This is, this is how you do this. And within days, I managed to pick up so much um, that I was able to um, produce uh, the world news, the daily world news, um, the whole segment. And this was not because of my efforts or 
I had I had the abilities to learn, but it was entirely Talibai's or Talib Sahib's um, efforts that he had um, put in time and effort to teach me. And then over time, whatever I did, he always encouraged me, like whether it were if I was making a report myself or whether I was working on a documentary, he always gave me feedback um, like, well done, Nosh, uh, I'm really proud of you. Um, uh, you've done a great job. He would give me these comments and those comments would um, lift me up as well. And I would be like grateful to him like for uh, supporting me. A few things that I've observed um, over the last three years, uh, I have I've mentioned uh, some of those points in uh, the documentary as well and for al Hakam article as well. That had seen Dale Sahib observe the voluntary fast on Thursdays on a regular basis. And often sometimes I would forget as well. And then if I would offer him lunch or anything, he would say that um, I'm fasting. And this was something I would take an example as well, um, that he's, he's uh, a Rabbi and if I'm not doing uh, such things, then um, I should be doing that. And I should uh, try and uh, follow his example in the same manner. Another thing that um, is really important to mention, um, we did uh, see that he had a very strong attachment with Khilafat and had a lot of love for Khilafat, which was portrayed in all of his work. He used to write letters to Huzur regularly. And uh, how I know this is because um, after Huzur moved to Islamabad, he would regularly send me letters and say, could you forward these to the office, please? And uh, once he did send me the letters, after an hour or so after or the following day, he would ask uh, was if I was able to forward those letters, to which I would reply, yes, I've, uh, I've done it. And this is really um, emotional for me as well, that uh, before he departed for his trip to Africa, he had written uh, three letters. And um, one of those letters, it was uh, regarding his uh, trip to Africa. And in that he mentioned, he said, Hazul, pray for me that I'm going for my trip to Africa um, and uh, I'm going to film for this documentary. So pray it all goes well. And in that, um, after the lines were like, he was saying, Hazul, I am unworthy of the task that I'm going to go ahead with. So, and I have sh uh, weaknesses and shortcomings. So pray that may Allah removes those weaknesses and makes me a good representative of Jamaat, uh, MTA, and for the family of the Quran's Messiah. And when I read that, I became extremely emotional and I felt as if his prayers has been answered and he has received the, the best re reward one could even uh, wish and desire for. And I had seen that in his work, um, a lot of people have mentioned that um, he knew the MTA target audience really well. He knew um, how to do story writing or script telling. He was really good at that. Yes, he was really good uh, with the work he did, but he based everything on the blessings of Allah the Almighty and the prayers of Hazrat Khalid al -Masih. And I think that is why um, a lot of his documentaries and a lot of his work um, had become really popular is because he used to pray a lot for those um, uh, things that he used to do, but he also used to, he'd done it because he had immense love for Khilafat. And I remember when he first uh, initially came up with the idea of this week, as you mentioned, uh, if I could uh, briefly speak about that. When he first thought of the idea of um, this week, as or well, before it wasn't named this week, as all, but he, when he spoke to me, that he wished to do something across these lines where a program should be made on the activities of Hazrat Cliff of Messi, may Allah be his helper. He said we do make, we, we frequently used to make reports, um, say if a, a peace symposium happens or if Hazul has gone for a dress uh, to, uh, for a mosque opening, but there would be reports that would uh, be edited and prepared the same day and then would um, go out on the world news and be uploaded on YouTube. But they did not reach uh, the audience uh, as much. So he said, yeah, we can, uh, I wish to make a program um, where we can just make a whole episode and then broadcast it um, on one of the days. And when he came up with this idea, like initially I thought, yeah, that's a really good idea. If that could be approved and we could go ahead with it, then it could certainly become really popular. And um, when that was approved by Abid Sahib um, and he made the first episode, 
he was really, really happy and he was really excited um, to go ahead with um, uh, and produce more. Initially, when he was uh, making these programs, it was entirely uh, himself. He would go for filming, he would come back, he would do the editing, he would do the scripting, and he would make the whole entire program himself uh, without any help from anyone. And his whole week would be based uh, around this whole program or how he would do the other task fitting to, with this um, program. And I remember usually every Friday would be the day it would broadcast and um, he would uh, work on it. And I would be sitting in the office with him and um, often he would start um, around early morning, uh, start preparing the program. And, um, and then of course, uh, Juma would uh, come in and then we would go offer our Juma prayers uh, in the office, listen to the khutbah as well. And then after he would return straight after the Juma prayers and he would carry on with the work. And I have seen on many uh, weeks or quite occasionally, he would not uh, leave the office to go for lunch. Rather, if anything, if he was to eat, he would have little snacks or crisp or have uh, uh, water and that would suffice. And he would carry on uh, working till about 8, 9 p.m. till he's finished the uh, program. And then he would uh, leave to go eat something or go home. Um, and I had seen that he would be really careful when making these uh, programs. Um, and generally, even other reports that if he had worked um, and they were about Hazrat Khalifa Masih, he would be really careful regarding those. He would check those, this episode of say about 20, 30 minutes, he would check it about three, four times in case from his side, he has not made any errors because he did not want to uh, displease Hazur or um, get a, a complaint re um, regarding that or he, didn't want not, he did not want to upset uh, Hazur uh, in any way. And then after he would do the checks himself about three or four times would be the minimum time, uh, amount that he would uh, go through it himself. He would ask me as well, um, before broadcast, he said, uh, can you have a look and go through it carefully and see if there's any mistakes in the subtitles or in regards to any of the editing or if anything I haven't picked up, you might be able to pick up. So this showed like he had immense or great love for Khilafat. And, um, and then going forward, um, when he went to uh, all the other documentaries that he had worked on, they were all his ideas. Um, and he made them to himself. And then, of course, it went for approval from Zul. But this documentary uh, in particular, he went to work on in um, Africa and he was in Ghana. This was uh, in direct guidance of Hazrat Khalif al Masih, may Allah be his helper. And then Hazul had, had instructed uh, Abid Khan Saib that MT News Department should make a documentary on the Nusra Jahan scheme and uh, the sacrifices and the work of the Khulafa for the African nations. And when he had uh, come to know about this, uh, that Hazur has himself um, directed us to make this documentary, he was extremely happy. And uh, he mentioned it to me as well, and we spoke and we said, yeah, this is um, going to be really good, inshallah. And uh, we hope we can fulfill the expectations of uh, Hazrat Khalifa Masih. And uh, he was extremely excited and he was really happy to work on this project. And inshallah, uh, I request prayers as well that uh, we are able to continue this work that he had left and uh, are able to fulfill it um, up to his expectations. Another thing that I remember, um, Dali Sahibud was would um, always speak in direct guidance of Hadith al Masih. He would act according to the guidance given, whether it, whether it, the guidance was to him or whether it was to anyone else or all the members of Jamaat, he would pick up the, that guidance and he would act upon it immediately. He wouldn't see, um, oh, I'll start in a week or I'll start uh, shortly, but he would start and um, act upon the guidance himself from that moment onwards. And Hazul had mentioned um, also that um, regarding the Hajjud. So I remember one day um, so Hazul had been uh, spoke, uh, speaking with Murabiyan uh, in virtual Malakas and Hazul had instructed uh, that Murabiyan should offer at least uh, one hour of Tahajjud. And this was guidance given to uh, Murabiyan and not um, in particular Wakfiz Indigis or the Ahmadis around the world. But Dali Sahib had taken this guidance as if he was given this guide, uh, direct guidance uh, to him. 
And I remember we were sitting in the office one day and I, I, I saw him and then we were just speaking. Um, and he did look a bit tired and I asked him, uh, is everything okay? Um, and he mentioned that how Hazur had instructed from Rabbiyan to read at least one of the Hajjad, so I'm trying to do the same thing. So I wake up about an hour and a half before uh, Fajr, offer an hour to Hajjad, and then I offer my Fajr prayers and then I try to get sleep, uh, sleep as much as I can. And he did mention at the time that it's really incredible. Like uh, I, we, I'm only trying for one hour and Hazul definitely does it for more than an hour, but I, he he said to me like I'm not I don't know how Hazul does it for over an hour or just even an hour, like it's really difficult. But of course, this is a guidance from Hazul Khalifatul Masih, so I will try my best to uh, act upon it. And um, even before, um, of course, he was uh, regular in offering the Tahajjud prayers, but in particular, whenever he used to be working on a documentary or when a, whenever the documentary would be ready for broadcast. He would mention that we should pray for the, its success and uh, pray that uh, it goes well. And he would also, also um, ask me as well, uh, pray that everything goes well. And he would, on those days particularly, he would offer Tahajjud prayers um, so that those documentaries, uh, if there any are any shortcomings, those are fulfilled with prayers. And Dali Sahib did have this quality that he would. Um, would incline towards prayers in all of his work that he'd done. Of course, he created many uh, great documentaries, but I mentioned earlier as well. But he, those documentaries, of course, his abilities were amazing, but it's only because of the prayers that he was doing, they were, uh, they were being accepted and because it was Allah's grace and his blessings um, that those documentaries had become really popular. And over the course of last three years, um, since I had uh, worked closely with Dalai Sahib, I remember this. This is a very unique quality that he had. I mentioned this in the documentary as well, um, that I have never come across any individual with such quality or such determination um, for this task, was that he would frequently um, walk to work uh, from Fazl Mosque or before he was living near Fazl Mosque. And um, it, it will take about an hour or just over an hour from to walk to Batafatul from Fazl Mosque. And, um, and this, uh, he would walk uh, into the office, say, four or five times a week or perhaps more. And he would walk in um, and he would be listening to Khalifa Rabi Rahimullah's uh, Dalsu Quran classes. And those uh, classes alone are over an hour and there's over 400 classes. So he started this... Um, uh, task or he had made it uh, in, in, important to himself that he wants to uh, complete this task and then he on his way to work and on the way back he would listen to two to three episodes and then throughout the so he started this I think about perhaps three four years ago and just recently about um, a, a two couple of months ago he had finished listening to the entire Dersu Quran classes I remember when he uh, finished those he came to me and he was really happy that he had done this and then often when we were sitting in the office as well, uh, say he had listened to certain points or he wanted to speak about it, he would speak to me and uh, we would discuss uh, certain points or what he found interesting. And uh, that I, I got to learn uh, a lot from those classes as well through our conversations. So apart from uh, uh, the office, I had uh, been able to personally spend a lot of time with uh, Dali Sahib and not just in the office, but also, as Amir Sahib said, he was really uh, um, interested in football. He would play uh, football frequently. So we would go from the office, we would play uh, football every Friday um, at the hub. So uh, he would be there. And as Amir Sahib rightly said, he was the life uh, in our football games and if in the week he was not there our football games would not be the same um, he would come and I remember even just before we, we would be sitting in the office and uh, he would message something an hour or two before football game started he would message something on the group um, to bring life or to bring that competitiveness uh, into the game he would say something like oh, good luck for the game today uh, watch what happens or some uh, common like that and uh, that way, they all the players that would come, they would come with another, they would come with passion and they would, say, they would want to uh, do the best they can. So he was, in fact, the life in our football games and he would uh, bring a whole dimension 
of uh, different uh, passion and um, and I remember in some of the football this is a really good quality I think we should all try to uh, act upon it as well that um, so during some of the football sessions um, he would forget his wallet or he would, uh, wouldn't have his wallet and then he would ask the uh, Nosh can you pay for me and I'll pay back uh, I would uh, say yes that's fine I'll pay for you and then Sometimes I would forget that I had uh, given him money or I had uh, paid for him, but he would remember. And the next day when I would walk into the office, the, the amount I had given for him, it would be there placed on my uh, uh, table. And I, sometimes th that amount would be so minimal that I would, I would be uh, embarrassed, like saying, Dalit, you, you didn't need to give it back, it's fine. But he would make sure that he, he, if he owed someone money, he would, he would pay them back as soon as possible. And uh, he mentioned to me uh, once as well that uh, not just that he would uh, pay them back, but he, would, he had also made um, on his notes that if he had only owed anyone money, he would uh, write on his notes so that he doesn't forget. So he would really take care of that. Uh, apart from that, um, after listening to Hazul's sermon and um, uh, watching the documentary, I'm sure everyone um, had been inspired, has been inspired. Uh, after even after listening to the sermon, we were thinking um, that was one of the best tributes, or is the best tribute one could receive. So uh, whether there should be a need, uh, should be a documentary um, or a tribute video for Dalai Sahib. And um, we were a bit hesitant as well uh, whether we should go ahead with it. But I think a lot of people, uh, especially after the Friday sermon, they did want to see and hear more about Dalai Sahib. And um, it is a blessing of Allah that I was uh, involved in uh, working for that. Um, and a lot we have received a great amount of feedback. And that's not because of us, but that's because of uh, the character uh, of Dalai Sahib. And, um, Alhamdulillah, it's, at the end, I will just request prayers. There's a lot of incidents um, or a lot of uh, um, uh, incidents that I have regarding that, but I think time does not permit me. But at the end, I will just request prayers from all the members um, of the Jamaat and uh, who are here at this uh, moment to pray that we are able to continue the good work of Dalai Sahib and all the initiatives he's uh, carried out, we are able to carry out in the best possible manner and um, are able to uh, carry on with these good deeds. So please remember us in your prayers as well. Zakala. Zakala, Basin Zab, Nakhirwan Sahab, that was uh, very inspirational. Um, and you have also mentioned a few things, but they were not mentioned in the documentary. So I'm pretty hopeful that all the members who have listened to these um, anecdotes and these. Uh, uh, you know, memories of, of Dalai Sahib, they will seek inspiration from them and inculcate in their lives. Uh, that includes everybody, myself and all my brothers and sisters. Um, so basically, we can simply say now that uh, his work was of utmost caliber and highest standard. And we're very lucky today that we've had three, all three were Wakfi Nizindagi who have presented in today's session. I mean, that was uh, the plan as well. And, and from, Perhaps wasn't the plan from the outset, but it turned out to be that all three brothers were Wakfina Zindagi. And that really is the most important thing to me and to us, that the ones who have given their lives for the cause of Allah, they are the ones who can talk better for somebody who himself has been dedicated to Wakfina Zindagi. It wasn't very easy at all to get these three guests uh, in one general meeting. It's not normally, they normally see that. Therefore, it got a bit longer than a normal general meeting, but I hope you haven't uh, got bored. There was nothing to get bored of. Uh, perhaps we've all learned uh, from Dali Sahib's uh, Sayyid Dali Ahmed Shaheed's uh, uh, noble life. We've learned lessons and we will all make every effort to inculcate those little things in our lives also. So I thank from the bottom of my heart, uh, Amir Safi Sahib, uh, Mubahil Sahib and Noshirwan Sahib for sharing uh, many precious memories of a diamond Sayyid Dali Ahmed Shaheed. Um, so at the end, I would also request prayers for the family and two more departed souls. Uh, father of Makbul Pati Sahib, as you will know, passed away uh, recently. He was buried uh, in the same cemetery where Dalai Sahib is buried. The next day actually happened in the room of Salid, his Friday, uh, his, his uh, funeral prayer. Uh, also, we have a very dear uh, Jamaat member, a senior member, Muhammad Afsal Turki Sahib, 
was also from Serpent Jamaat recently. Um, and please pray for these departed souls, very humble, uh, dedicated souls and their families in your prayers. And also at the end, thank you all of our Serbian Jamaat members who have joined with the families. Uh, please do watch Hazur's Friday segment once again and probably make notes of those uh, qualities that Hazur has uh, mentioned of uh, Sayyid And let's, all of us and our children, uh, uh, take inspiration and do the same. Jazakallah. And at the end, I would request um, uh, Amir Safid Sahib to lead us in dua then. Farooq Sahib, if you, if you, if I may humbly, um, may I humbly uh, relay that to Murabi Silsala and Sahib? That's, that's, that's even better. That's even better. Mushirvan Sahib, please over to you. Please listen to us. Dua kalam, sir. Dua kalam. Dua, dua. Pray, Kashi, please. In your own way, right now, please. Amen. Amen. Okay. 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 Okay.